It definitely feels different around campus now because now we got our first win. It feels good. And there was a whole lot of good in that game. I got the ball. I got to run the ball well. I caught a touchdown pass out of the backfield. I mean, I felt like a complete player in that game. But we did have some bad news. Angelo is going to be out for the season, so that means I definitely got to step up. I got to be this leader now in offense that we need. And Angelo, he's going to be working to get back. His elbow should be good come next year, but looks like he's done for the year. So I'm going to have to be a leader this year. It's kind of funny walking around campus, seeing guys wearing my jersey now. And honestly, I'm getting more attention now, but I don't want to let that go to my head. I want to be the best player I can be for coach, for this team. And let's go out there and get our second win this week. We have a tough matchup coming up. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jake from TNJ, and welcome back to the Coco Beach Rockets Dynasty. Now, we have kind of a tall task here because Angelo West is one of the best players we have on our entire roster. He is our fastest guy, one of our fastest guys, I should say. Definitely our quickest guy. Now, what that does is it kind of gives us a little strain because we don't have many guys that can separate in coverage, and that's definitely what Angelo West did. Now, we will have to use kind of some of our athletes that we haven't used in different ways before, maybe get a little creative with, in, creative with the playbook, I should say. And we do need to look at our depth now. Justin Begbalem is gonna have to play a little bit. He's a six foot four freshman. But with 44 catching, I'm not really sure how good he will be. He actually has a little bit of speed, 76. But we have some tough matchups coming up here in this episode. We go up against Memphis and also UCF. Two of the top teams in the conference right now. So this is not going to be easy. Memphis is led by Max Burks. He is a very good quarterback. And Memphis is on top of the Conference USA right now in first place. So with the win, they will solidify that top spot still. But they have a very good team. That's the difference. I mean, they are just loaded at offense, on defense. I mean, everywhere. And this is going to be a very tough game. And honestly, there's a lot of tough teams at our conference right now. And we are actually one of the best mid-major, I guess you can call us, conferences in the nation right now. So let's get this game underway. Here is Singletary back to receive the opening kickoff. And he will take it back for the touchdown. This has happened way too often here in this series so far. I think special teams is something that is very, very underrated on this game. In NCAA 14, the CPU doesn't really run back kicks. But in this game, it could happen anytime. As long as you have a guy on the field, you kick it, and they have a guy back returning, they can return it at any point it's seven nothing memphis so here is wilson caesar jr starting out the next drive with the handoff loss of two after his career game last week versus columbia and now that brings it to a third and 12. winston in the pocket he threw the ball well last week here's a throw off of his back foot and that will fall to the ground incomplete and it's still seven nothing here as they do get the punt right back so here is the eights getting a jet sweep this time and they have a lot of speed on this offense Memphis is a very good football team. I can't say that enough. So will we come up with a stop here? Third and five, throw it to the sideline and is caught by the tight end, Johnson, picking up a first down. Our third down uh, defense is very, very bad this year. We are actually one of the worst teams in the NCAA on third down defense. I believe we're like 115 as far as percentage. And then on offense, we're ranked dead last, 120. I think it's like 9% on third downs. So here's a pitch play out to Bush. He has room. He throws a stiff arm and picks up about a gain of nine, maybe ten. And that brings it to a third and two. I guess it was only eight. Stepped out of bounds. Here from the seven-yard line, here's an option keeper. And Burks has room, and he's going to take it in. It's a touchdown. Great keeper that time by Burks. And he does make it a two-score lead. And now let's see if our offense can keep up with this high-paced Memphis offense. So here is Caesar. He starts it out with a handoff up the middle, and he picks up about a gain of eight. I like what I'm seeing from Caesar Jr. He doesn't always break the big runs, but when he has a little bit of space, he will show that he can hit the hole effectively. So here, play action fake. Here's a throw to the fullback, and that was thrown to Jack Truck, and he just pretty much that was a bad throw by Caesar Winston. I think that you know sometimes with these throws. 
I don't know if Caesar Winston is acclimated with a lot of these receivers because a lot of times he just overthrows them. But here on the next possession, here's a quick throw with a pick, pick, interception, I should say. I can't even talk. That is Vincent Showcross. How about that play by him? And now we get a turnover, and we have good field position, start on, starting out at the 45. So here is Winston now moving to the right side. He tries to get rid of it, but they sent the pressure from the safety position, and our right tackle could not pick up the blitzer. We probably should have stayed in the pocket that time. It's a big loss. That was a loss of 13 yards. So third and 23 now. Another play action fake. Here's a throw to the left side and is caught by Perry Thompson, who now moves up the depth chart now that Angelo West is done for the year. It's a gain of 13, but we do have to pump the ball away. So here's Memphis back on offense and another pick. This time it's Taylor Jett. He has multiple interceptions this season as well. That's his second on the year. How about these guys? I mean, they just show some fight sometimes, and I just love this team so far. We're getting blown out quite a bit, but I got to say I have hope now because I can see the plays that they're making. Look at Hilliard. He gets the catch, and wow, has he been quite the receiver for Winston. You can just tell. I can just see the chemistry with those two already. So third and one, here's a handoff. Wilson Caesar, but tackled in the backfield this time he loses two yards but we will settle for the field goal here not do anything stupid we'll kick it here making it 14 to 3 and holt knocks it through and now it is down to an 11 point lead here for memphis so can we come up with our third turnover of this game the memphis quarterback has actually turned the ball over quite a bit this year here's burks throws to the right side he's got collier this time and he is a big time target on the outside. He's about six foot four, six five. He goes up and gets it for about nine yards. To under center, here's a handoff to the fullback. Hicks, and he falls forward. And he picks up about 10 yards on that carry. It's a first down. So now at the 38, another play action fake. We send the blitz with Rich and Dollar throwing deep to the end zone. Singletary goes up and gets it over Trayvon Scott. That doesn't happen a lot. But Trayvon Scott gives up the big play. And now they're at the one. Handoff. Bush. He walks it in. Touchdown. Just bouncing off a defender that time. And now they got 21 here. Let's see if we can answer back. So here's Winston out at quarterback. Play action fake this time. The pressure is there. But throwing across the middle. Josh Joyner has it. But then coughs it up. It's picked up by Wade. You got to be kidding me. And Josh Joyner is also hurt on the play but those plays you just gotta have great route he created the separation but then just fumbles it giving it right back to memphis and that's what bad teams do they just make it easy for the other team and now they're set up with great field position so two and a half to go here in the first half he's a throw to left side he's got his man johnson on the first play it's a touchdown for the Memphis Tigers. And oh boy, no, 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 not Trayvon Scott. He cannot be hurt. If he is hurt, we don't have anybody in the secondary to play good defense. So it looks like Josh Joyner actually hurt his shoulder. He's gonna be out for two weeks. So not only are we gonna be missing our top receiver, Angelo West, but also Josh Joyner also will miss time. That is just incredible. So now down 28 to three, you can just see Memphis has all the momentum. You can see that momentum bar. It's all the way full. Third and long now. Here's Winston throwing deep. He's got a man. It's at Beg Below, and he can't hold on. You've got to be kidding me. When you get the opportunity to play, you have to make the plays. Now, I highlighted that he only has 44 catching, but good speed, and it shows on that play. As Memphis gets possession back after the punt, and now they start to move the ball again. Burks, another great throw this time. And now they have it at about the 20. Play action fake. Throwing across the middle. It's Garrison this time. Their second string tight end. He has about seven yards. Burks looks like he has not missed a pass so far yet, but he's got six in a row. Here's a throw across the middle, and they're going to call. Pass interference on the defense. A little too happy, but Phoenix Frazier Jr. does get called for the penalty. So now inside the five, here's a handoff this time. Bush again, 35 to three here in the first half. It's just not close. It just looks like we are just outmatched in this one. And Memphis strikes again. 
And now we just move on to the fourth quarter. It's not even close here now. 44 to three. They strike one more time. Here's a handoff. This time it's Yates and another touchdown scored by Memphis. And that one will be the game. Memphis just absolutely throttled us. We did score a field goal. <laughs> I mean, if there's that, at least we scored our first points versus an FBS opponent. I guess it's not really a big feat, but here in season one, it definitely is. And I'm, you know, not too worried about this loss. This is a top team in the conference, one of the best defenses as well. And we didn't look too bad, but we did turn the ball over in some bad situations there. That fumble by Joyner. I mean, you got to make the plays. I mean, that's been pretty much our Achilles heel this season. When we do get those, you know, big time plays, when we get the uh, catches, we always drop them wide open. Even we might drop them. And that's just been how it's been going this year. Hopefully we can clean that up in the future. Vincent Showcross had another interception. Add that to his total this year. He's been absolutely on fire. And then Taylor Jett also had an interception. Good game by those two, but not too much to say here for this Rococo Beach team. So we fall to one in six, but how about Pensacola? They are two and five, so they are struggling as well. But now we're at the bottom of the conference. At least we're not the worst right now. Southern Miss is also pretty bad as well. So we do play them later, but now we play UCF. Number 17 in the country, undefeated so far, and this is going to be a tough game. This might be tougher than Memphis. Kevin Smith is their quarterback. He has turned the ball over quite a bit, but they run the ball really, really well. Charles Odom averages 6.1 per carry, eight touchdowns this year as well. Then they have a pretty good freshman redshirt running back as well. He is running pretty good as well. He's got four touchdowns. They have Nolan at receiver, who's a sophomore, so they still have a young team. And then Timothy Anthony is a senior. And their defense, very good at getting after the quarterback. Five sacks, four sacks, three sacks, two sacks, two sacks. I mean, they have a lot of guys that can get after the quarterback. This is going to be extremely tough on our offense. So let's get into the doubleheader here in this episode. We are on the road in Central Florida, and here we go. As now Blumenthal is back to receive the opening kickoff. He has space, and finally a nice tackle. This time they didn't run it back on the opening kickoff. So here is Smith under center. He's going to hand off this time to Odom, and that's actually a nice play design. It looked like that was going to be a reverse. Ended up being a kind of quick dive up the middle. So this time, play action fake. They go to the flats this time, and the tight end, Thomas, has it over. Phoenix Frazier Jr. hits a first down. Nice throw from Smith. So hand off this time, Odom. Odom's got speed, man. He is quick, and he gets to about the 40-yard line. Big time run from him. And Phoenix Frazier is shaking up. We have so many injuries here in season number one. Here's a quick throw this time to Odom out of the backfield. And nice play by Christian Crump. Uh, Christian Clump turning him on the inside. And that's a nice tackle by Trayvon Scott. And that brings it to a third and eight. Smith goes deep. One-on-one -on -one for Trayvon Scott and knocked away. How about the season that Scott is having? It ends up being that that injury he had last game was just to scare. He looks healthy now. And that was a great play. Fourth and eight. They went up to go for this. Here is Smith. He's just going to take off. And he cuts up field and picks up the first down. The lefty just runs. He is a dual threat quarterback. I believe he has about 78 speed. But a nice play that time. And now they have a fresh set of downs. It's at the 26. This time it's Odom who tries to get to the outside. Stripped away. Vincent Showcross. This kid is balling out. If we put the pieces around Showcross, I can't imagine what he could look like with the very good defense. He's making play after play, and he strips one of the best running backs in the conference in Odom. And we take back over now as UCF has all the uh, momentum. But here's a handoff, and that is Caesar Jr., who has a, about a gain of 10. Actually, we have all the momentum right now. So here is Winston, quick throw to the right side, and that is incomplete. They have a very dark shadow over the field on the right side. I wonder if that's actually affecting the, our player's ability to see the ball. So third down, here's trying to hand off, and we can't even get that off. The pressure was in there right away, unblocked. 95 just absolutely destroys Caesar Winston. Didn't even see it. I'm surprised he did not fumble that ball. So UCF takes back over on offense. Here's a quick throw across the middle and a diving catch by Thomas this time. 
and he picks up the first down. Nice throw by Smith, the lefty. So at the 37 this time, throwing across the middle and a great touch pass this time to their leading receiver, Nolan. If that was a bullet, that may have been picked off, but we misjudged that one. It's a first down. So now at the 16, here is Smith, the lefty, throwing to left side. One-on-one -on -one Nolan with Trayvon Scott. And Trayvon Scott is actually doing a really good job covering Nolan in this game. So here on a third down, here's a quick throw and deflected at the line. The pressure was in there right away and hit Smith on that throw. It's now three to nothing. So here is Winston back onto the field and the pressure was right there. He had to throw that one off his back foot and Perry Thompson can't hold on to that one. But Clarence Bodyford, our starting center, is shaken up on that play. So from our own 17 this time, this is Winston. He throws to the right side. He has an open man, and that is Avery White who can't hold on. I highlighted this before. Our guys are getting open at times, but then they just don't hold on to it. And that's a drop, and we have to punt it away to UCF. So here is Smith back on offense. The lefty throws to the right side. He's got his leading receiver, Anthony and he coughs that one up. Actually, Nolan is their leading receiver, but that's actually their senior leader. And now here they are to start the second quarter after that fumble scare. Here is Smith. He's going to try to scramble. Cuts back to the middle of the field. He's got space. Tackle that about the 10-yard line. And that one will make it uh, about a first and goal here from about the 9-yard line. And that was Takahashi on the tackle. So here is Smith. He likes to take off. He gets inside the 5. Another tackle by Trayvon Scott. Now they have it at the one. Handoff, Odom. Touchdown, UCF. And the Knights score for the first time in the end zone this game. It's 10-0 under the lights. So now here we go in the second quarter. We're going to hand it off this time to Avery White, who has another jet sweep. We tried it versus Columbia, and it worked out. We tried it once again, pick it up again at four. I actually like that play call. So now here's Winston now, third down, throwing across the middle, and that's going to be dropped. And wow, you got to help out your quarterback, man. That is the freshman running back, Caesar Jr., and we have to punt once again. So here's a throw across the middle. This time it's Nolan who does outrun our defense. You can just see we tried to get there in position, but their speed is just too great. So here's a pitch play. This time a great field position. Odom spins away and does get hit by Showcross. But it looks like he's across the first down. We do not have a first down in this game. UCF has nine. So here's a quick throw. This time, Anthony does outrun the defense. It's a touchdown. Takahashi gets beat on the quick slant. And Anthony does the rest the senior receiver for UCF. And he takes it all the way. And you just see that was just speed right there. Outrunning Jet and Takahashi and taking it in. It is now 17 to nothing. So two minutes left here in this game. Here's a quick throw across the middle. That is caught by Hilliard, and he gets about a gain of six yards. So here is Winston under center this time. Perry Thompson lined up in the backfield too. Here's a handoff, and he could not hit the hole, and that's a loss of maybe two yards, bringing it to a third and six. A minute and a half to go here in the first half. Here is Winston throwing across the middle. That's Perry Thompson again. Another drop. We just have to have these passes. you got to help Caesar Winston out. I mean, he's putting the ball there. you just got to hold on to the ball. So now UCF has the ball before half. Here's a throw to the right side. Anthony puts him on a move on Takahashi on the outside, and it's a gain of 13. And they call the timeout, and now they're across the 50-yard line. So they're going to play action fake this time to Odom. They have a couple of options. They're going deep to Anthony, and it's going to be caught. Touchdown over Trayvon Scott. It looks like Scott may have got caught looking in the backfield a little bit, and they outrun us for the play action touchdown. The lefty throws a beautiful pass, and that is going to make it 24 to nothing. Two touchdowns here for Anthony in this game. So here is Winston now in the second half, throwing on a play action fake. Nice touch pass to Hilliard. He picks up the first down once again. And now we have a first down. I guess it's something in this game. So here's Winston this time from the shotgun. And off the edge, they sent the blitz unblocked is the outside linebacker McDonald. They are 
some sack beasts, to be honest. They haven't got after us too much, but here on a third down, here's another throw to the left side, tipped around. And Perry Thompson, you got to have it on the first try. It was caught by Hilliard, but a heads up play by the tight end. So now we fast forward a little bit. 27 nothing at this point. Here's a handoff this time. It's Charles Oldham. He picks up a gain of six. Third and four. Counter play called once again. Handoff up the middle. And a tackle by Vincent Showcross. But a first down gain of 10 yards. So now they have it about at about the 35. Here's Odom, a big time move, and he hits the hole hard. How do you stop this? I mean, look at Odom. He had nothing there. Counter play. Look at all these defenders here. That's going to stop right there. Boom. Hits the hole, makes a man miss, and it's just crazy, man. Now they're inside the 15. Hand off Odom. He has an open lane, but he jukes a little bit. If he just would have ran, he probably would have scored on that play. And they get inside the five now at the four. Hand off. Odom once again. Juke into the middle of the field. Touchdown. I mean, how do you stop it? You can't. It's just impossible. We just do not have the talent up front. And it just seems like it's just a little too late here. UCF is in full control. They have all the momentum. And they've done everything they've wanted in this game. So we just want to get some carries here. Maybe we should sub out Caesar Jr. Because now I see uh, Haley for them is getting hurt. As now Winston remains into the game. Hand off, no play action fate. Throw to the right side, and they sent the pressure. We had an open man that time on the outside, and it looks like that was either Joyner or Takahashi, but I swear Joyner had a two-week injury. I have no idea how he's playing this week. And we go for it on the fourth down, and that one will do it. The pressure gets to him, and we just do not want to risk injury. After that, we sub out all of our starters and just get him out of there. 48 to nothing ends up being the final score. We do not score in this game. It's it's tough. It's tough to compete with these top teams. And at this point, you know, we have to win a conference game because in this game, they will actually demote you from the conference. And we could be facing that if we do not win a conference game. We do have to win something here in the conference here in season one. Otherwise, we could end up being an independent next year and have to earn our way back. And that will be tough. I, I can't lie. That will be tough. We'll have to kind of play, you know, conference uh, opponents that, you know, uh, you don't want to go down that road. I don't even want to get into it. I can't even talk. So we did end up losing to UCF, and we do have some good news, though. Couple more commits. How about Ryan Patterson, the tight end, and Rodney Young also commits. So I believe we officially have all of our recruits here in season one that we were at least highlighting we only had four but in order to stay on everybody's top you had to kind of be in their top five in order for them to stay on your board there's no like you know things with coaching tree upgrades where you get to unlock players things like that so i think that's it for in-season recruiting for us we have our top four guys and i think off-season recruiting will have to be very, very big for us. One thing I love about off-season recruiting, it's very, very different than NCAA 14. You have five weeks, I believe, and you basically get to get a whole group of new recruits that you get to go after. So I'm really, really excited for that. But here's the thing. We have about three games left in the season. We definitely need, actually we have four games left. We definitely need to get at least one conference win. Our team isn't doing terrible right now as far as our talent goes, but... We're not winning. We're not scoring. We're not doing anything. We definitely need something different. So let's see if we can get a win next next uh, episode in conference play. We have four games to do it. So hopefully we get it done. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Wave. I'm in it for keepsake. In the field with the cleat lace. Beat foot with the bare face and a slick tie. That's what she say. She look good. She a big tease when she bite lip with the wink face. Hella bad when she throwing it back. She bring out my way for the team play. For Pete's sake, I'm above average. I'm padding my stats. I got a matter what he's.